everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sui Chen, and I am a senior software engineer at Uber. Uh, today, I'm going to present the topic, uh, Scalable Real-Time Complex Event Processing at Uber. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, introduce a little bit. Uh, so in Uber, our mission is uh, try to make transportation as reliable as running water everywhere for everyone. And we are in six continents, 70 countries, and 400 plus cities, and it's growing. Um, this is the outline of the talk. Uh, first, let's uh, talk about the motivation. So in Uber, we are a data-driven company. We use Kafka as our log aggregator system and stream processing platform. We have thousands of Kafka topics logged in real time from thousands of microservices um, for business. So imagine in real time if we can um, massage and combine all this useful information, uh, we can extract lots of useful business insight uh, from this rich set of logs. So for example, um, if we detect multiple lock-ins from the same IP address in the uh, last 10 minutes uh, from the lock, from the lock-in lock, uh, we can actually take actions to try to ban the IP from lock-in um, to uh, prevent the fraudulent user from abuse the system. Another example is uh, the partner try to game build a system by uh, first accepting a trip and then he calls the rider to ask the trip, uh, ask the rider where he is going. So if the partner don't feel comfortable going to the destination, he will just basically um, ask the rider to cancel the trip. So this kind of uh, pattern uh, is actually uh, bad for the rider experience, and if we can detect this in real time, we can actually take actions um, to improve the rider experience. And another simple example, it's uh, uh, partner basically which a second pickup chip of the pickup of the Uber pool chip. So this actually have a, a financial impact uh, on the, in the company. Um, so there's many other like uh, a lot of other real world use cases, but if we uh, like take away all the real world details of these um, examples, we can actually abstract away and see uh, what is underlying computer science um, that it's going uh, that un behind these examples. So for example, for the first one, um, the multiple locking from the same IP in the last 10 minutes, it's basically a simple window aggregation. Um, in the last 10 minutes, group by the IP and count the number of logins. And the second one uh, is basically detecting a pattern uh, of multiple events happening um, within a time window. And the third one is basically a uh, simple filter that this is a second pickup of a Uber pool chip. So there's many other of this kind of uh, real world use cases. And of course, I mean, we can have our engineers to code the logics and uh, test and deploy and maintain um, this real time processing uh, pipeline. So we th can we make it more efficient? The question we want to answer is, so we borrowed a, a similar idea in the batch world where you can use SQL to basically um, query the database to retrieve data. The question we want to ask is, can we use some declarative semantics uh, for real-time stream processing too, um, so to st specify these stream processing logics? So the answer is actually already in the industry for over a decade. Uh, which is called complex event processing. Um, the idea of complex event processing is it combines data from multiple sources to infer events or patterns that suggest more complicated uh, circumstances. And complex event processing has been used across many industries, uh, like in finance for trade analysis, fraud detection, uh, in airlines for operation monitoring, healthcare for claim processing, patient monitoring and in also energy and telecommunication. One very nice feature of complex event processing is it uses declarative rules and query language to allow users uh, to specify the um, event processing logic. 
So after a uh, lot of uh, uh, investigation, we decide uh, to use the um, CD, complex event processing engine from WSO2. Uh, the reason behind that is first is very lightweight and it's also very extensible. Uh, you can write your own custom extension on uh, a lot of um, different thing. And also it's open source. And one, and one last thing is it's a Java library and it go well with a lot of the current uh, stream processing framework like uh, um, Samza and they're all written basically in Java and Scala. So there's a, also which set of features support it, uh, like filter, join, aggregation, group by, uh, window, pattern processing, uh, sequence processing, event table, um, user-defined function, and also uh, extensions. And one key thing is it has a, a declarative query language called CDQL, uh, which is brought there. Um, So um, how CD works uh, from a user's perspective? Um, basically, from the user perspective, you only need to specify the processing logic declaratively using the CD query language. Um, so here is the query um, for the multiple login from the same IP address. Um, so as you can see, it's uh, very readable, uh, similar to SQL. And so here, basically, it reads from the login stream, the Kafka stream, um, over a, the last 10 minutes, a sliding window of 10 minutes, uh, do a group by, uh, do a group by of the IP, and then uh, count the number of login. And then if the login count is larger than 10, basically you insert that into another stream uh, called login attempt repeated to the stream, which can be then used to take action a point. Uh, at real, in real time. So internally, uh, the way CD work is uh, it pass the query that the user specify at runtime into a execution plan. And as event flows in, the execution plan runtime will process the in event inside the CEP engines according to the query logic. Um, so the next question is, uh, well, how can we actually make it uh, the complex event processing scalable um, at Uber scale? So the answer we choose is uh, Apache SAMHSA, which is a, a distributed stream processing framework offered by uh, uh, original created in Linkin. Um, so it's distributed and also scalable. Um, it has built-in state management and built-in fault tolerance uh, to support uh, at least once messaging processing uh, guarantee. So um, the next question uh, we won't need to answer is how can we make the stream processing output useful? Uh, because uh, you need to integrate with the rest of the company ecosystem in order for other people to harness the power of complex event processing. So the answer we have is we generalize a set of common actions um, to make it easy for services or human to harness the power. So here's a, a set of actions we found that's useful in practice. Um, the first one is uh, making an RPC call to another external, another microservice, or uh, invoke a webhook endpoint, HTTP, uh, or index the data into Elasticsearch or Cassandra uh, for real-time analytic query, or write back the data to Kafka. Uh, for further processing. Or send it through STSD uh, for like a uh, monitoring system like uh, Grafana. Or uh, through the chat service or email or push notification to notify uh, human operators in real time of the uh, situation. So well, basically that's um, um, like the 10,000 feet overview of what it is, um, the real-time real scalable complex event processing platform we build by combining basically SAMHSA um, and CD and the actions. So next I'm going to uh, take a little deeper look into the uh, architecture of the system. So here is the overall diagram. Um, so it basically composed of 
two main components. Um, the first component is at the top, which is the RESTful backend that store all the query and action logics uh, in, a, in MySQL. Um, so it offers web, uh, web UI for um, developers to actually uh, use us to specify the, edit the query, um, the actions that they want to take. And the second part is the uh, st stream processing data pipeline. Um, so basically, it consumes message, uh, message from Kafka, and the data pipeline runs in Yang. Um, and then after that, in the, in the end, it takes actions. So I'm going to take a, uh, first I'm going to take a, lot of, uh, a deeper look into the data pipeline side, and I'm going back to the uh, RESTful backend uh, after this. So the data pipeline side basically consists of uh, three major processors. Um, the first one is called the uh, partitioner. So what the partitioner does, it's similar to the map stage of a map reduce job, that it we partition the event based on the key. Uh, we support a uh, predicate push down uh, through query analysis to uh, basically pre-filter out the um, event um, before the entering the, the second stage, the query processor. So the second part is uh, the query, the second processor is the query processor, which is the uh, main complex event processing engine. So we, integ we integrate that with uh, CD. Uh, what it does is basically it pass CD query into execution plan one time and then process event in the city execution plan one time. Um, to ensure recovery of a point uh, crash and restart, uh, we use SAMHSA's built-in uh, ROCKSDB to checkpoint the city engine state uh, regularly. So the last processor is called the action processor, uh, which is quite apparent from the name. It executes action upon the outputs from the complex event processing engine. And it supports various kind of actions for easy integration, uh, as I mentioned above. And also, to provide at least one delivery guarantee, we implement the um, retry mechanism uh, using also the built-in SAMHSA uh, ROCKSDB. So with all this uh, processor, the question that uh, comes to mind is how can you actually, um, like, translate a query into a physical plan that runs and executes. Um, so the answer we have is basically we automatically uh, generate a stream processing DAC in SAMHSA um, using all the processor list ab listed above by analyzing the city query. So here's a few examples. Uh, for example, for uh, some simple filter and transform transformation logic, uh, the query will be translated into a DAC like this, which only consists of a query processor and the uh, action processor, which just take the real-time stream from, from Kafka, uh, process it in parallel, and then take actions. And for more complicated scenarios like join, window, a pattern, which require uh, first we partitioning the uh, first we partition the event, uh, we will translate that into a stage like this, which has like multiple partitioner in the beginning, and then uh, query processor and the action processor. And so for more complicated one, um, this can also be uh, translated uh, if you require multiple uh, query processing and then repartitioning. So one key takeaway from this is no stream processing logic is hard coded in any of the processor. That's how it make it um, reusable across different use cases. And all the query and action logics, all the actual streaming processing logic and actions, are actually stored externally in database um, in the REST API backend. And we offer a REST, RESTful API uh, for cloud operation on all this data. And if basically the query logic change, um, we will look at whether it's necessary to we deploy a new SAMHSA DAC in Yang. Um, so if not, uh, the updated query and actions will just be loaded at runtime without any interruption. 
Uh, and also that comes with one nice thing is uh, because every use cases that we have, uh, we share the same set of processor and use basically query actions to describe the processing logic. So we can use a single monitoring template to monitor across all different use cases. And, current, and currently we have like about 100 plus production use cases and uh, processing 30 plus billion message per day in real time. So this is a field of application that has been applied to, like fraud detection, alarm detections, uh, marketing campaign, promotion, monitoring, feedback system, analytics, and visualizations. So next, I'm going to talk about some of the limitations. Uh, the first one is uh, out of order event handling. Um, so in the real world, I mean, event of different um, type might arrive out of order. So uh, currently, we don't handle that because uh, it's not a big concern for us because event of the same rider or the partner are usually seconds apart. And so out of order event, um, it's very unlikely um, for the same rider or partner. Uh, but if that is a concern, I mean, we can use the case snack extension in city for uh, out of order event processing. Uh, the second limitation is we have is uh, auto scaling. Uh, so right now we have to manually repartition the Kafka topic uh, to increase the parallelism um, as the traffic grows. And also at the traffic grows, we also need to manually tune the container memory um, if it exceeds the current allocation. Uh, in the future, we are considering uh, use iCPU memory and IO stats um, to auto scale the uh, data pipeline without a manual intervention. So the next is a few challenges that we face. I'm going to talk about. Um, the first one, it's a, a checkpointing state. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, in the query processor, we periodically snapshot the uh, CD engine into RocksDB and Kafka in order to provide a recovery upon crash and restore. Uh, however, the CD engine snapshot can be large, uh, depending on how large your window is and the volume of data. Um, and SAMHSA basically use Kafka to lock the state changes. And Kafka has this default message size of one megabyte, uh, which limit the uh, size of snapshot that you can take. So the solution we have is uh, we basically construct our own logics to uh, slice the states of the CD engine snapshot into uh, smaller pieces and checkpoint them into uh, uh, Kafka. And then upon recovery, we basically reload the, all the pieces and we construct the um, state. And the second challenge we encounter is uh, uh, SAMHSA used before, it used a single threaded model to process message. So when we do checkpoint, if the state large, it will take a long time to actually write the state checkpoint uh, to an external system. Um, so I think the open source community is also addressing this problem um, by providing a multi-threaded support. Um, and in fact, it's, uh, I think it's just released. Um, the third challenge we have is, well, exactly one state processing. Uh, the problem, for exactly one state processing, it's uh, uh, a point crash or recovery. Um, your, some of the states might be double counted. Um, so currently we have uh, no, uh, not yet a good solution for that uh, under Apache, uh, under SAMHSA, um, because it could not allow us to commit state or end the Kafka offset atomically. So uh, we don't have exactly one state processing. Um, so another challenge we face is uh, how we extend our custom business logic. Um, so a city provides which set of extensions that allow lots of common um, um, functions like a mass, string, geo. And for our company specific, um, we basically, the way we do that is we implement the 
those common logic as uh, CD extensions that will be loaded at compile time. And um, for ad hoc logics, uh, we basically use the UDF support from CD, uh, which you can write the UDF um, in JavaScript or Scala along with the query. So another challenge we have is uh, intermediate Kafka message. Uh, so basically, SAMHSA use Kafka as a message queue for intermediate processing output. And so this can actually create a very large load onto Kafka if a heavy topic is partitioned multiple times. Um, so the um, solution we have is basically we try to encode the intermediate message um, and compress them uh, before sending to Kafka to reduce the footprint. Um, so another challenge we face is uh, multi-talency. Um, so the older CD version processed the event using a thread pool. I think the, I remember the last version. I the version that we used before is like a thread pool has like 128 thread allowed for. So this is uh, bad for multi-talency uh, in Yang uh, because it will consume. We can like uh, there's no bound on how much CPU it can consume per container. Um, so a good thing is the new version um, uh, for the main processing, it's in the single thread. And others, I mean, for scheduled task, uh, it's use, using a thread pool. Uh, but overall, this is uh, um, performed really well. And so now the CPU consumption per young container is bounded. So uh, when we run multiple jobs in the, um, the young cluster, uh, they, they're all happy. And, um, So the last challenge we have is upgrading uh, SAMHSA jobs. Um, so upgrading SAMHSA job currently requires a full restart of the job. So this can usually take minutes uh, uh, due to um, we need to find resource from Yang. And also the offset trap pointing topic can be too large during the um, recovery of the, um, the, the job. And also change log topic can be too large. And there are multiple solutions to this. For example, we can set the retention hours, the retention of the Kafka topic to hours to minimize the data that need to be read um, upon restart, or enable compactions in Kafka to reduce the amount of messages in Kafka. Um, so for critical jobs, I mean, we cannot like, really tolerate um, downtime, like even of uh, one or two minutes. Um, so the idea we have is we use replica replication strategy uh, during the upgrade of the job uh, to prevent this uh, uh, from having downtime. Uh, so the way we do it is first we start a shadow job, um, and then we upgrade the shadow, and then we switch primary and shadow, and in the end we upgrade the primary, and after that we switch back. So the downside, of course, of this is we require double the capacity uh, during the upgrade. But um, the good thing is uh, we, you have zero downtime uh, during the upgrade, which is important for some of the uh, critical jobs that is user facing. Yep, thank you. That's it.